please welcome a man that I am honored to call a personal friend and for all of us a trusted oracle of the Most High God, the president of Hope of the World Ministries, the Messianic rabbi of the Jerusalem Center, Beth Israel, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Thank you so much. Greetings to all of you who seek to do the will of God. 2,000 years ago, in the land of Judea, on the hills of Galilee, the Jewish rabbi named Yeshua, known to the world as Jesus, said to his followers, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do men light a lamp and place it under a bowl, but they set it on a lampstand. It gives light to everyone in the house. So let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Those who call themselves by his name, the disciples of Messiah, bear this charge. They must be the light of the world. Light is an active agent. It doesn't conform to its surroundings, but it transforms them. So the light of this world must impact and transform the world around it. If we are the light of the world, then we have gathered here to follow but one agenda, the agenda of the one who has called us into being. And thus our agenda must be the agenda of the light. What is that agenda? It is to manifest the love of God and to fulfill the purposes of God on this earth. How? It's written when Messiah comes, all the nations will be gathered before him, he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides the sheep from the goats. He'll say to those on his right hand, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. The righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you and he will answer them and say to them, Inasmuch you did it to one of these, the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. The agenda of the light is to shine into the darkness of need. If we are the light of the world, then we must minister to the needy of this world. We must give food to the hungry, drink to the thirsty, refuge to the stranger, clothing to the naked, healing to the sick, and compassion to the prisoner. If we see the hungry and do not give them food, then according to the word of God, we are choosing to let God go hungry. If we see the naked and do not clothe them, we are choosing to let God go naked. And if we see the sick and let them perish, we are letting God himself perish. The light must shine into the darkness of man's need and do everything in its power to fulfill that need, even to the giving of itself as he who is the light of the world gave of himself. What is the agenda of the light? It's to stand against the darkness. Thus we must speak the truth at all times regardless of what is popular, regardless of what is fashionable, regardless of what is politically correct, regardless of what is political or pressure, what it comes upon us, regardless of the opinion of the day and regardless of the cost. We have convened in this gathering place of the world's nations, and we take note that nations and powers rise and fall. In the days when the empire of Assyria towered over the world's nations, the word of God came to the prophet Isaiah and said, they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Two and a half thousand years later, the Assyrian Empire is buried in the sands of the Middle East. But the word given to Isaiah is inscribed here on the walls of the United Nations. And those words are assigned to us, that all things of this world pass away, but the word of God endures forever. Thus, we must never place our trust or stand on foundations that crumble to dust. We must never follow the shifting opinions of man, but the eternal word of God. We do not change the truth to conform to the world. We conform to the truth and change the world. And the very fact that the prophecy of swords and plowshares inscribed on the walls of this place from the word of God are from the word of God tells us they cannot be fulfilled apart from the answer found in the word of God. We must do all we can to be part of the answer. And we must also affirm that the answer doesn't come from man, but from him who is the answer. We affirm that it's the truth of God's love that produces the works of true healing, true restoration, and true peace. So we reaffirm that our first and highest commission is to share, to make known, and to proclaim the love of God to all people. 
as he commissioned us thousands of years ago. What is the agenda of the light? The light of the world came as the Messiah, as the shepherd of Israel. He wept over Jerusalem and as he foresaw the future of his people, the children of Israel. But for most of these last 2,000 years, those who called themselves by the name of Messiah did not love his own people, but hated them, vilified them, oppressed and wounded them, hunted them down, and delivered them to their deaths, Jewish men, women, and children. Messiah's own family killed in the name of him who for them shed his love. We must love those on every side of every conflict. We must seek the blessing and peace of all. At the same time, if we claim to be of Messiah and have no love for his own people, the people of his own heart, we cannot claim to be of Messiah. In a world that has proven to be hostile and dangerous to Jewish existence, those who are called by the name of Messiah must of all peoples bring the love of Messiah to those who brought the Messiah to the world. To fulfill the command of God, as it is written, comfort ye my people, speak kindly to Jerusalem, and he will bless those who bless them. What is the agenda of the light? It is protect, to protect the defenseless and to stand against the darkness of evil. The light must protect the weak of this world, the oppressed, the afflicted, the powerless, the children, the unborn, the persecuted, and the broken. It's written in the book of Hebrews, remember those who are in chains as in chains with them. Meaning the people of Messiah must first remember their brothers and sisters who are bound in the chains of persecution. More Christians have been persecuted, brutalized, and killed in the modern age than in any other. Every year, tens of thousands of Christians are dehumanized, tortured, killed. Over 100 million believers live in the darkness of persecution. This very body, the United Nations, adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights which declares that everyone has the right to manifest his religion or belief in teaching, practice, worship, and observance. But then why is it that believers are being killed for their faith in our day, in our midst, and next to nothing has been done? And as for us, no people can call themselves the light of the world if they watch passively on the sidelines, as those who share the name of Messiah are oppressed and killed for their faith. If our faith consists of how comfortable and prosperous God can make us while we deafen our ears to the cries of those who are neither comfortable or prosperous, our brothers and sisters imprisoned and tortured for their faith, how can we bear the name Christian or the name of God? On the day of judgment, we will be asked, what did you do? Why did you do nothing to save them? And what will our answer be? So as we sit on our couches in front of our television sets in our air-conditioned homes, they sit on the stone floors of prisons, and we remember them not. They would say to us now, do not forget us in our suffering. Do not forget us as our enemies come to take our lives. Do not forget that we once lived on the earth and gave our lives for him who was our light. We must not forget them. We must remember them, and we must do whatever we can to protect them and save them. When you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. So if we stand by and do nothing, will he not on the day of judgment say to us, when my village was burned down, why did you not help me? When ISIS came to kill my family, why did you not intervene? When I was tortured and crucified, why did you deafen your ears to my crying? Why did you let me perish? And when that day comes, let it not be said of us that we heard the cries of God and did nothing to help him. Let us do the only right and moral thing we can do, as it is written in Scripture, deliver those who are being delivered to death. And lastly, what is the agenda of the light? It is written in the Word of God that in the latter days there will be a great falling away from the faith and persecution of the faithful. We are living in the days that have witnessed both these things, the, when Western civilization is rapidly descending from its biblical foundation, when good is called evil and evil is called good, when darkness is called light and light is called darkness. And when those who remain faithful to the precepts of the light are branded as dangerous or enemies of the state. And those of Messiah wonder if they should keep silent. What is the agenda of light in times of darkness and such a time as this? There is only one agenda. It is not to keep silent. It is not to bend. It is not to yield to the darkness no matter how great. It is the agenda of the light to do one thing in season and out of season. And that is to shine. In times of darkness, the shining of the light becomes even more critical. These are the days of our testing. We must not compromise and we must not fail. If we live in the day when the darkness is growing darker 
it is time for the lights of the world to shine even brighter. If the bad is going from bad to worse, it's time for the good to go from good to great. We cannot appease evil or be intimidated by it. We must shine even more. We must blaze against the night. It is the candle that shines in the night that lights up the world. And he has given us the power to shine. For we know that the power of God is greater than this world. And that by this power, the power of the Spirit, the power of hope, the power of goodness, the power of faith, the power of love, the power of God, we can do all things and overcome the darkness. For when all is said and done, the only thing that will matter in the end is, did we do the will of God and light up the darkness? And no matter what it looks like, no matter what the odds, we must always remember in the end, the good shall prevail with God. The good shall prevail over evil. And lastly, to encourage all of you regarding the power, the faithfulness, and the preeminence of our God. For over 4,000 years, all the forces of hell, all the powers of evil, tried to wipe the children of Israel off this earth. The pharaohs tried to vanquish them. Assyria tried to annihilate them. Babylon tried to crush them. Rome tried to eradicate them. The Nazis tried to exterminate them. And the agents of terror threatened to obliterate them. But the pharaohs are gone. Assyria is no more. Babylon has fallen. Rome has crumbled. The Nazis have perished. The terrorists will be no more. They've fallen. They've perished. They have gone from the earth. But, but, but. The nation of Israel lives because the God of Israel lives, the Messiah of Israel lives, and therefore you, his people, will live, and his word is true, his love is everlasting, the light will overcome the darkness, therefore people of God shine into the darkness, shine against the evil, shine against the night, shine into the nations, shine through the world, for you are the light of the world. And thus says the Lord, Kumi ori kiva orech uchvo dadonai alayach sarach Arise and shine, people of God, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you and nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your shining in the name that is above all names that are named, the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, Melech Bachim, the King of Kings, the light of the world and the hope of Israel. God bless you all. Shalom. Thank you.